Hi, Bashi. Hi, Sufi. I have one last thing to talk about in regards to my spring break trip. Oh boy, you're really stretching spring break out. Well, it, I, it's a whole, it's a piece of it I haven't addressed yet. And I guess in defense of the show and the way I usually get pretty crabby, this is a I know. family vacation that you I took. I can't believe you're giving me grief for talking about a family <laughs> trip. Well. The next thing, if you were like, eh, come on, man, you got to have some memories of SNL from 04. <laughs> no, that's, that ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, flight home. First of all, flight there, flight home. Alexi's such a hero. She really believes, and it was a five-hour flight. She really believes the kids can do activities the whole flight. She gets them modeling clay. She gets some sticker books. She gets some mazes. She gets, there's three different kinds of crayons. It's incredible Mm -hmm. uh, what she does. With that said, kids just burn through that shit. Yeah. I mean, the kids wanted the clay out before we took off. And, you know, again, we're leaving from a New York airport. We were like 15th in line to take off. By the time we're in the air, the modeling clay is dried. It's like rock hard. (laughs) So eventually about two hours in, we allow them to switch over to watching movies. Uh Uh-huh. You know, again, and they get very excited. Sure. About watching a movie on the back of a seat on a plane, right? They all have their own headphones, I'm guessing? They all have their own headphones. Okay. Another thing we're doing a lot of is we're loading up old phones of mine that are now defunct with books on tape. And so the kids are actually, the boys at least, will listen to Harry Potter and enjoy. That's great. Also, Ash is only allowed to watch the Harry Potter movie after he has read the book or had it read to him in this case. Right. Yeah, I was going to throw some quotes around read the book. Yeah. I saw in your eyes some (laughs) quotes were coming, so I thought I'd... (laughs) I jump in front of that one. But flight home, Posh. Here's what happens on the flight home. I got Addy on one side of me. I got Ash on the other. Dude in front of me. It's like a three and three, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm looking sort of kitty corner. Guy who's technically in front of Ash. You know what he's watching on the back of his seat? Uh, I don't even know why I'm making you guess. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Ooh. Now I'm watching it, again, not the right way to watch Raiders, one seat up with the sound off is not the way to watch Raiders, but it's so good. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to watch Raiders. And Ash, because Ash is watching something, and Addie's sort of just looking at the map. You know, she's yeah. she's too young. She doesn't know that that's not a movie. So she's just yeah. looking at it. She, pro- she must love that part in Raiders where it's just oh. the map. Oh, right. You're right. There's a yeah. lot of that in Raiders. Yeah. And I watched Raiders of the Lost Ark on the plane, and man, oh, man, that movie holds up. It's so good. So good. It's so good. But then a few times... You know, there's some gnarly moments in Raiders. Mm -hmm. And I look over and Ash, who again is watching his own movie, is just eyes locked in (laughs) on Raiders. (laughs) Just locked in on the maybe the some of the gnarliest moments of Raiders. And I, you know what? I made a decision to just look at him and give him a nod like, yeah. Yeah. This is in your future, bud. Yeah. Movies like this are in your future. Yeah. I remember when we were little, little, when we were living in Michigan... We had a babysitter, Joe. Do you remember Joe? Yeah. But I remember he was watching Deer Hunter. Yes. And if and it was like just on TV. But if we were living in Michigan, I was five or under. And I remember yeah. seeing some Deer Hunter stuff I def shouldn't have seen and def didn't want to see at that time. Yeah, that, that Russian roulette scene in Deer Hunter. Yeah. I'm remembering now. I definitely first saw with a babysitter. Yeah. It's funny Because I think, you know, there's a lot about how hard it is to be a modern kid, you know. But, like, the fact that we have babysitters who would just come over and be like, let's see what's on. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and also they had, like, there's three things on. Yeah. I'm going to watch the coolest one of them. Also, right, at 8 o'clock at night, none of the three things were kid-friendly. Yeah. It wasn't like, go go over to the old Netflix account. Do you, back to Harry Potter real quick, uh, now that Ash is listening to professional audiobook readers of Harry Potter, is he less impressed with your reading? Thank you for asking. I think he's still impressed. I think (laughs) I'm not going quite fast enough for him anymore. I think Uh the only downside of this, you know, um, back and forth or or trade-off, I should say, we've done with him is now he's he's just charging through the books. I think he's staying up too late. We let him have it in bed too. 
I think he's just, mm-hmm. um, I will, I'm basing this on the fact that like five times last week I went in and he had fallen asleep with his headphones on. So he's definitely just trying to like <laughs> grind through it so that he can hold up the phone. And so he came in very late the other night to be like, I just finished book five. Can you download book six? I'm like, go to bed. <laughs> oh, wait, I think I told you this, but not on the podcast. You, we've talked about the fact that you had a moment that Ash just had. You had a moment where you told everybody you were into Holstein cows, and then for like three years, everybody bought you cow stuff, and then you had to make basically announce that you'd made a mistake and you don't like cows. So yeah. Ash just had this with Legos. He just, you know, had his eighth birthday. He got so many Legos, including How from you. Can you say Legos? I know, because I'm I've decided I don't care about people who don't like it that okay. way. Lego. Right. He got yeah. some Lego. <laughs> now you sound dumb. Yeah, right? If I'd have done it, it's, the only way to do Lego is this way. You get it wrong, someone corrects you, and then you say it. Otherwise, people would hate me. I'm not going to be the guy who walks around as like, Lego. You had a few of those where you would do the foreign pronunciation of stuff. Did I? Yeah, I'll try to remember. I don't know, but I'll remember. Anyhow, all right. So, Ash getting too many Lego. Well, we told Ness, and I'm remembering, we had to tell you because you got him Lego. You got him a box of Lego. I found out when I was on a FaceTime with you. Yeah three days after his birthday and he drag asses into the kitchen and he's like, thanks for my gift, Uncle Pashi. Someone else is going to get me the same thing. Yeah. And then on top of it, which by the way, that didn't happen. He didn't get the same thing. But he did get so many Harry Potter Lego. That <laughs> Harry Potter's Lego. He got so many of them and he had a real breakdown because it was... That thing that happens to a kid, they ask for a bunch of stuff. In the time it takes for them to come, he decides he doesn't like that stuff anymore. And I went into the other room. He was sitting in our little playroom, TV room. It's a, t- it's a room with a TV, and we never watch TV, so it's basically the kid's playroom. And he was just yeah. sitting with a big box of Legos, of Legos bricks. <laughs> he, <laughs> he had a big box of Lego in his lap. And he just was staring at this beautiful box of Harry Potter Lego. And uh, I just heard him saying, who likes Lego? Not me. To himself. (laughs) (laughs) Do you think, I went to a kid's second birthday. You knew the the parents? (laughs) No. (laughs) Yeah. And there were a bunch of people going to this party. And I know... You know, this little girl, she's got plenty of toys. And it, it you feel like you need to bring a gift. But at the same time, I was like, do you? Yeah. And I feel like I need to buy something, you know, for my nephews and niece. And certainly our uncles would have done that. But I don't, where's all this stuff go? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, trust me. How many Lego sets did he get? I think part of the problem is everyone feels like, oh, we need to buy him something. Yeah, we're back. Like, that kid doesn't need anything. Yeah. By the way, did our uncles get us presents? <laughs> Uncle Kurt would show up with stuff. I, in my head right now, I know what Uncle Kurt showed up with for our birthdays. <laughs> scratch tickets? Yeah. Scratch, like yeah. 10 scratch tickets <laughs> he got from the liquor store he worked at. Uh, yeah. Maybe a thing of pretzels. I mean, it's all pretty good. Yeah, as I think about it's it. It's all pretty exciting. It's also probably better than a box of Legos for mom and dad because everything was immediately garbage. It didn't just like build up. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's the move. Yeah. Scratchers. Yeah. Talking about reading slow. We have a snail population at our at my building in LA. Oh, okay. And when it rains a little bit, these snails will come out. And it's very exciting. Mackenzie and I really like the snails. Oh, that's good. I was was wondering if... Well, the very fact that you called it a population instead of an infestation was pro-snail. No, it's just like there's just like a couple come out when it rains. And there's like these little drains. And Mackenzie the other day sent me a video or a picture of this like snail trail. And the snail had ended up just on top of this drain. But in that day, it was very sunny. And everything dried up. And I walked past this drain and the snail was just on dead center on the drain. And I was like, oh, this dude didn't make it. Like there Uh. was, he couldn't get away and it got too hot out here. And we, you know, Mackenzie gets, you know, sad if she sees a crushed snail. If if I ever step on a snail, it's very, you know, you feel terrible. So this snail was on this grate and I took some water down and I poured it on him. And he wasn't moving. And I was like, it's not going to happen for this guy. And then later on, I went down and he had moved. 
but it was still hot out and he was running out of water. So I got him some more water and I got this little like, it's like a knife, but it's like a thing that you move chopped vegetables from the cutting board into the pan. It's like this big flat thing. Yeah. And I laid that down, put a little, some little celery greens on it and he crept up on there and I moved him to a new place. But the whole procedure took a long time. I was going to say, I think the difference between me having three kids and you having none is <laughs> I wouldn't have gone and checked on the fucking snail. <laughs> But I walk by the snail. When I'd taken the dogs outside, I walked by the snail. And I'm like, this, I'm just either, I'm watching this thing die or I'm going to save this thing. And then it happened again the other day. So I, it's like, and I'll just like bring a book out there now. And I have to wait for the snail to climb up on this. Now, wait, wait a uh, second. If it happened again, isn't there a chance the snail's like, oh, finally made it back? <laughs> Jeez Louise. I think it's got to be a different snail because I walked that first snail a long way away from where he ended Interesting. up. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So multiple, so, um, this is happening to multiple. Well, do, I do think, um, I don't know if we should just keep doing updates on this podcast about that or start a second <laughs> one <laughs> with, with just the snail, the snail cast. Yeah. You're a good man. And I know snails can be invasive and they're not, uh, they're not always, uh, yeah. you know, people aren't always psyched to see snails showing up. But, but you, I yeah. am. I mean, I think, that, look, there's, a, you know, some people, aren't psyched and some people are uh, like you and Mackenzie and totally insane. <laughs> honey, <laughs> honey, come outside. The snails are back. <laughs> the snails. Yeah. It's very exciting. Debbie, our dog, she always loves the snails. Mm -hmm. She uh, will always give it a little sniff. Move on. Great. They're our friends. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> I have, for those of you who are still with us, <laughs> We have our uh, our friend Yorma Taconi is joining us, and it's a lovely conversation. He has an incredible uh, his uh, upbringing is fantastic and a really uh, good story coming your way. But first, Jeff Tweedy. That guy. deep. You got those deep pipes. He does yeah. have deeper pipes than he appears when you first meet him. Yeah. Yeah, for such a short guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you said it, not me. <laughs> I <am a> short <laughs> guy. <laughs> you know what pops into my head every time I see your full name printed? Uh, what is it that my, I put myself in quotes? No, no, no. Yeah. I just think, do you like your Matacone? Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know why, but that's always been the way it works for me. I don't even know what that's a reference to. Uh, the Pina Colada song. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, uh, the minute I do a parody song, Josh is in the woods. <laughs> you know what's really funny is that recently, because I've had this experience too, but my having my brother say it was somehow more insulting. But he was like, he was, recently, Ace was like, yeah, sometimes I just think about your name and I just laugh. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, but it is such a weird name. Like, whenever I've met anybody who has a similar, like, yo, yo, has or like, it, just any yuff sounding yeah, name, yeah, a J like, up front, a bizarre name. <laughs> I will say, Yorma Taconi is a fantastic name. Also, it's interesting that Asa would take that position because I feel like that is in the m the same ballpark of name. But it's biblical. It's like Old Testament biblical, right? So, like, you're more. Like, I would just say Asa. both of you. His name is Asa. Yeah. You're J-O-R-M-A. Both of them, I feel like you have to tell people how to pronounce it. Yes, because Asa is somehow. Is. Yes. Did I tell you the funniest one I ever got when somebody? What was the best? Because they and this was also it was also funny because they weren't trying to be insulting, but the guy was like, "I'm sorry, urine." And I was like, "Urine? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 my parents didn't name me urine." But you're named after some uh, like a kick-ass guitar player, yeah. Yeah, the uh, yeah. Michael Conan uh, from the Jefferson, Air, uh, Jefferson Airplane and like Hot yeah. Tuna. So, yeah. And I met him and I, I did uh, I did tell Because him. this should be, because I feel like when you're named, when your parents name you after a kick-ass guitarist, there's two paths. One, 
your dad just loves a band. But this is the better version. Your dad knew him. He was a friend. No, 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 no. They, my dad <laughs> just loved the band. <laughs> oh, God, I thought they were friends. Oh, so no, it's the worst, no, I it's met, the worst I, version. I met him because I, I went and saw him at McCabe's <laughs> Guitar Store at P- in Pico Velvo Boulevard. And I, I, Great, uh, so your dad was just like, this guy shreds. <laughs> Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I don't even know if you like the name. I think he was just like, yeah, Shred. That's cool. <laughs> he was like, we're naming him. He didn't know the name first. He said to your mom, whoever this guy is, that's what the boy's name is going to be. He's got it. like, I got bad news. I looked he's it got up. It's, shred. <laughs> it's bad news. It's urine. And she's like, I don't think you say it that way. And he's like, oh, okay. It's close enough. But better. It's getting better. Yeah, I think he saw him at Woodstock or something. I don't know. And what is was it. Ace's name just just the bibli- straight biblical or no? Was it- there was a okay. there was a a guy named who we just always referred to as Big Asa in Berkeley uh, who who he was a family friend kind of and you know, so he was I think he was eleven or something he was like a couple of years older than me and I, and he, actually Big Asa sold me my first car too which uh, wow. was a 1977 Plymouth Volare that he described as doja green inside and out, which is a very <laughs> Bay Area term for weed. So, like, so Oh, doja. So we, you bought a weed green <laughs> Volare? Yeah, it was pretty cool. Had dense running up and down the sides. It was, it was I mean, so uh, Yorma yes. is from the Bay Area, and along with Andy Sandberg, and Akiva Schaffer. And every detail I ever hear about growing up in the Bay Area makes me happier and also is illustrative of the way you guys all turned out. This this story that I'm going to tell you guys is very, very Bay Area, too. Like, very Bay Area. Like, I was thinking about... So you're I'm talking basically... <laughs> you kind of are... You've taken a different approach. I feel like you're showing up with one trip that you want to talk There's about. There's one trip that is a long... <laughs> it has de- different facets... And we can talk about family trips in general, but we didn't take a lot of them growing up. So, so we can talk about whatever you guys want. I'm perfectly. <laughs> but this is a very Bay parent, like par- my parents and like both me, like me and my brother were talking about this. And we were just like, oh my God, this. Trip. All right. So I'm going to let Josh is going to maybe lay down some tracks before we get to your one massive trip. Great. Sounds- yeah. Well, I mean, just sort of set the scene. Your brother's how much younger than you? Uh, my brother's four and a half years younger than me. Okay. Were you psyched? That's old enough to know if you're psyched you're having a younger brother. Were you psyched that another one was coming? In a very Bay Area way, I was at my <laughs> brother's birth, which was at home. <laughs> There's a picture of me and my my best friend, Ari, like just like Macaulay Culkin, just like watching it happen. Like, oh, God, what is this? And then my parents <laughs> saved his placenta in our refrigerator. So it was in our freezer for like a year because they forgot about it. So whenever I would try to go get ice cream or anything, I'd look up there and be like, well, that <laughs> piece of meat there is for mom. <laughs> what was the goal of keeping it? What was sort of the the end game if it hadn't just been forgotten I, after a year? I think that they were their intention was that they were going to eat it. Yeah. yeah. That was my fear about freezer was definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and then like some freezer burn, you're like, wait for the won't. right, you know, wait for July 4th or, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they're waiting for it. But yeah, they just, yeah, freeze the brain and then they planted it under a tree. Yeah. My Alexi has become more Bay Area with each successive birth of our children because the third Addie was a home birth. <laughs> Wait, which one was in the lobby? With like, because that's the, second. the boy. Yeah, the second one was in the that's lobby, which birth. was she that was she was trying to have a New York birth and then her women parts were like no we are we are of the bay (laughs) i mean that's the coolest home birth story ever i feel like we maybe saved the first placenta and had the same situation of like there's no and the end we're not gonna actually do anything with it but what i was getting at was the kids it was the the home birth happened at night or else i bet the boys would have been i don't know i don't know if they would have watched or not but i think they would have been nearby what time did it happen like 11 o'clock at night it was the best because they went to bed. It was very much Shoemaker's Elves. They went to bed and woke up and somebody else had made a baby that was just there. I honestly thought you were talking about Michael Shoemaker for a second. <laughs> That's the problem with having a shoemaker. <laughs> having a real shoemaker in my life yeah. named Michael. And your parents are both very creative people professionally, yeah? Yes. Yeah, my dad is an artistic director of theater. He's a theater director yeah. and uh, is. And my mom was a graphic designer for many, many years and is now... Sort of retired. She's she's retired, but he's he attempted to retire and hasn't. Gotcha. And they've managed to make this work with normal names like Troy and Sue Ellen. What's funny is that 
my wife is named Marielle and then we named our kid. I, I wanted to name our son Wiley and then name our last child like Bob. So then, cause I just wanted everyone to have a good name. <laughs> ostracize. Bob Tacconi is definitely a guy with like a used car place on Long yeah. Island. <laughs> for, for sure. There's, it probably exists. Yeah. yeah. He sells rolls of quarters. You're like, I need rolls of, I got a 20 and I just need a roll. Go see Bob Tacconi. Uh, He's got it. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, tell us about this trip. What's a creative uh, Bay Area family? Well, before, yeah. So before you tell us about the trip, yes. what were what was like sort of a baseline trip? Well, I did research, you know, which I think most people do because you're like, oh, do I, am I remembering these? Not everyone does it, you are really? And <laughs> yeah. let me say we appreciate okay. it. Okay. Some people, some people do so little research that about five minutes in, they say, oh, so it's a, it's about family <laughs> trips. <laughs> Oh, really? That's, so you're yeah. massively, massively ahead of the Those curve. people are doing better than me. I think the better you're doing yeah. in your career, the less research you're doing. <laughs> you do wow. the podcast you're about to appear on? They're not doing better in Larry Meyer's <laughs> eyes. I'll tell you that Yeah, right that's now. true. My dad is very down on people who, who don't do the work. Yes. Well, honestly, like I was trying to remember the trips beyond going to visit grandparents. Because most of our trips, financially growing up, we were not doing well at all. So then we, we, I grew up in Berkeley. Um, as you said, we lived in a pretty crappy neighborhood in Berkeley. So we got robbed a lot, and which was really funny because we didn't have it. We had no nothing to rob. And there's some really good stories there, but that this isn't about that. Well, I do want to take a pause because it's t- almost too interesting to just pass over when you got robbed were you always away from home when you got robbed were you no there's a couple (laughs) couple stories where i remember (laughs) someone trying to break in through the one window that didn't have the electrical alarm tape with this crazy alarm that was like a school bell alarm so it was the loudest thing you've ever heard but but if you broke a window and it had the gray tape then it would shatter the, the tape and then it would trigger this alarm um, and the one window that only had iron bars on it was being broken into. So I remember seeing a guy trying to get into the, <laughs> to the, and then the, the, one of the funnier times when we were robbed, we were robbed by our, our neighbors. By the way, it speaks to how many times you get robbed if you have a funny one. It was, there's a couple <laughs> funny ones. There's a couple of funny okay. ones. This one was, was that they used our, our own wheelbarrow to, <laughs> steal an amplifier and a, like all, all of a sudden like you know old school uh, stereo equipment that we had but they covered up it seemed like they had covered up the stereo equipment in the wheelbarrow with diapers and so there was a trail of diapers leading to our neighbor's <laughs> house <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny one and then another one was we, we did take a trip a family trip and and we came back and the alarm had been going off for like 12 hours Ooh, so every so all of the people in the name nobody cared that we got robbed at that point. Everyone was just like, "Turn off the fucking alarm!" <laughs> the, the fire department had tried to be there. And nobody could turn it off. And yeah. Anyway, so now, what is the order of things? Because if the neighbors stole your stereo equipment second, I feel like they're now it's a justifiable theft. If they had to go through twelve hours of the school bell alarm, yeah, that's true. <laughs> You mean like if it had been going off and then they were like, you know what, it's already going off. Let's, let's, let's. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just steal shit. <laughs> I think that's fair. I, I hope. Yeah, I, I do hope. Did you Did you ever, uh, I mean, I'm assuming you confront the neighbors when you realize they've left a, no. a diaper trail? There was another moment that I was telling my dad about this because I, I don't think he had, had ever heard that story. Like there's, I mean, it's it's sad. We were, we were living in a, a pretty crappy area. But no, there was, there was a moment that I was walking to the corner store to get, I was really obsessed with Now and Laters. And, and I was yeah. walking to get Now and Laters at the corner store. And, and our neighbor, <laughs> this isn't that funny because I'm like seven or whatever, how old ever I, I was, but like, but our neighbor threatened to kill me <laughs> with a, with a kitchen, with a kitchen knife. And the thing I remember most about it was that, <laughs> that I think it was our kitchen knife. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Louise. It was a serrated kitchen knife that I was like, oh, that's, I think that's our knife. Like, that's what I remember about it. And I just sort of went, walked around him into the street and walked to the corner of the store. Was this your next door neighbor? Or No, we okay. didn't confront anyone. <laughs> it is funny. I like that, yeah, in your seven year old, it's like, I'm going to kill you. It's like, well, I'm afraid the tables are turned because you've just revealed yourself to be a thief. <laughs> a thief. <laughs> I'm afraid your attempted murder will have to take the back seat. Because <laughs> you're in trouble, mister. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you columboed your own assailant. Yeah. 
No, there was a lot of that growing up. It was it was just like a and the, the weirder part was we had a um I never experienced this before anywhere, but there was a mobile police station on our block. They had a bus that they parked there on our on our block because it was so it was so bad growing up. There's I don't know. I mean, it's it's no longer uh, like this sort of thing, but um yeah, that was it was pretty intense. So so regardless. We didn't take that many family trips because we just didn't have that much money. Well, it also, it seems like, yeah, when you leave, people take your things and your neighbors hate you. (laughs) (laughs) And then you need to buy more things. So any money you have goes back into replacing televisions, amplifiers, kitchen knives. The cost, it was an exponential cost for you to go on vacation. The least of it was how expensive the vacation was. Yeah. 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 We should, yeah, we just left our doors open. Where did your grandparents live? Were they close by or? So, yeah, my grandmother lived in Stanford, Connecticut, so that we would go out to the East Coast a lot. And and I remember, like, th- those were great trips because, like, we got, obviously, got pampered because we didn't, I, my grandmother didn't get to see us as much. And then also, uh, my other grandparents lived in Irving, Texas, so uh, very hot. But I loved visiting them. So we, we did that a lot. And then we went camping and, and things like that, but it wasn't, we didn't have that many trips overall. I was like, like the, but the, those were my big memories. What were the activities of note when you went to your grandparents, like the Connecticut or the Texas? My grandmother in Connecticut, she's a very feisty Puerto Rican woman who she taught Spanish for years, but she was like, had more energy. I think you, maybe Seth, you must have met her at some point. Yeah, yeah. Was she at the wedding? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Hey. absolutely. And then, she, like, I'm sure she came to the show. And I'm like, but yeah, she w- had so much fucking energy, and so she would wake us up at like six in the morning, singing like Spanish songs, like, like "La Vanta de Soldados." Yeah, get up, get up. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta go play tennis. It was like, oh. And I was always obsessed with with vacation. I was like, this is vacation. Like just the word vacation was so frustrating. Being like, it's not, you don't get up at six to play tennis. (laughs) But yeah, she was just, uh, she was obsessed. Yeah, ball of fire. That's great. It is funny. I feel like it's dawning on my kids now that they can use the idea of vacation as a way to have the same complaints they always have. You know, they always want ice cream. And then all of a sudden we're on vacation. Oh, yeah. They're like, it's vacation. <laughs> Shut up. You always want this. It's yeah. a good argument. I always like when your kids have pretty good arguments. And my yeah. kid now is starting to really know. So he's like, where he, he, if it's educational, he's like using educational now. It's educational, but I'll learn. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> and that's why you need this Pokemon pack. Like, <laughs> um, how old's your son now? He's nine. All right. Yeah, figuring it out. And in Texas, with uh, with those grandparents, was it like were you in a city? Were they out in the countryside? What's uh... no Irving? It's, it's, it was it's like really suburban, like a lot of track housing, a lot of like cul de sacs. It was always so hot. I just remember like as a kid, like being really excited to use the. <laughs> You know, like the first time when you get a hose and it's the hose with the, like the nozzle and you're like, I'm a fireman. And I just <laughs> yeah, yeah. very excited about being a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> so Texas to me was like the place where I got to like shoot the house with a hose. Yeah. Because you thought maybe it was going to catch on fire with how hot it was. You know, it's possible nowadays. Yeah. yeah. I, it's so nice to hear you actually dial into that memory because of course I remember the first time you did it and I feel like I forget when my kids are doing it that there's just no way to get through to them because this summer they were just blasting our house with a hose and yeah. I was like stop oh, it so and I was telling them to stop yeah. and they what are couldn't you doing? they physically couldn't stop it worth it also because you're feeling like the kick of the like the hose has power in the yeah. way that you've seen like a firefighter like whoa this thing yeah, yeah this is and they were just like they were spraying different surfaces they're like ah, i'm gonna shoot wood i'm gonna shoot glass then it's like i'm just gonna blast it into the ground till it turns into mud <laughs> like they yeah. just were on yeah so i got one of those like power washers because it was i was recently to to clean the deck and this is really fun because you can, it's probably, this is not a good idea for just saying this out loud in public sort of thing, but I was shooting my kid with the, the power washer <laughs> and he like, it, 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 it has so much water. You're like, you're instantly <laughs> like, he like, he loved it. That was, I, I like any activity that's like a parent activity, but you're having a pretty good time. Yeah. Yes. When our father used to be in charge of baths with us, he sort of took a much 
heavier handed approach and he would just have like a bucket yeah. and he would call us <laughs> dirt ball number one and number two. Yeah. And we'd get like, he would just pour the bucket over our heads and you just get like deluged. And then he'd like scrub <laughs> shampoo and then he'd go like dirt ball number one. And he'd like pound you with a bucket. And it was like, it was yeah. Yeah. efficient yeah. and it was aggressive and it was fun. Oh my God. I mean, I'm sure he was having a great time. Yeah. And you a hundred percent knew when it was the times he gave you a bath, like how it was going to go. I so yeah. I last this was last night. I, there was a, a bunch of kids who came over after they they were doing their little Pokemon thing, and they all got Nerf guns and were like, "Come outside, be the dad. We need a dad." <laughs> Because they just only abuse dad. And so I was like, well, if I'm doing this, I'm really doing it. So I got this leaf blower. <laughs> I got this huge leaf blower and, a, and an umbrella and just walked outside, clicked the umbrella. So that's my shield. And then just shooting kids with <laughs> this leaf blower for like half an hour. Was, God, that's good times. <laughs> I'm going to steal that. I think both of those are. Yeah, I solid. think watching a dad come outside with an umbrella and a leaf blower is as exciting as seeing Bane in Batman for the first <laughs> that time. That was my goal. Like, no! yes. What a beautiful voice. And now we're going to take a quick break to hear from one of our sponsors. Support for family trips comes from Airbnb. Airbnb is the presenting sponsor of the Lonely Island and Seth Meyers podcast. Seth, you know how I feel about leaving money on the table? You hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And I have a place that I should be hosting on Airbnb right now. But instead, I'm a sucker who's not doing it. Well, guess what? This very ad we're recording this moment is about what you are lamenting. Well, you know what? If you're listening to this right now, learn from my mistakes. Like your place might be worth more than you think. You can host it right now. You can go to Airbnb and check out what it might be worth. Are you telling me, Orm, you might make more going on vacation because you hosted your home on Airbnb? You might make more than zero, which is what I'm doing. Your home might be worth more than you think. Find out how much at airbnb.com slash host. Here we go. All right, so your big trip, the big famous yeah. trip. So, okay, so because we didn't ever get to do anything, and like I was, again, obsessed with like the word vacation, like we're going to go on vacation, was the time that my, like, I was 12 years old, my brother, so my, I, was, I think I was like 12 and a half, 13. So I, I'm angsty too. Like, I'm just like, in addition to being obsessed with like, this is my big vacation, we're going to Hawaii for the, like spending some money. Like, wow, we're going to Hawaii. And my brother's eight. So we, and we're going to visit my, my godmother, who is a woman named San, uh, Sandra, who, who sadly has passed away. Um, so, but she married a native Hawaiian man. So, but like, so we're going to go visit them on Kauai. So I'm so excited. And just to give you some context of how, I've been disappointed in the past by my parents. I remember we had this super shitty Volkswagen bug that was like every every fender was it was a different color. It was super dented. It was super embarrassed. Like like that was our, our family car. And I remember when I was in third grade, I was obsessed with as I every kid was Lamborghinis and limos was the other <laughs> car that I was like you can drive a. Lim-. I just thought you could drive a limo and that was, was like the coolest car. Saying so, so as I'm running to like my dad picks me up. I'm like, did you bring, did you bring a limo? I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, did you bring a limo? Did you bring a limousine? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, because he's a dad. I'm like, like well, that's exactly what I would have said. I'm like, yeah, I brought a limo. <laughs> and then running outside to see this fucking embarrassment. Like, oh no, no, I hate this fucking car. This, oh. But it, this felt like this to me, to me, because again, I'm 13. But so we go. So when we show up to my godmother's, what I thought was a house. She had been squatting on, she was, okay, let me give you some context. I was also, like, my, my parents are very political, liberal-minded. Like, you know, my mom worked for a socialist newspaper, and she meets Sandra. They're selling little red books together, which is, is Mao's, like, doctrine, whatever. Like, so, so, you know, they're communists. It is for real. They are the stereotype of what every... Republican thinks a normal Democrat 100%. Is today. Yes, my parents are like... <laughs> they were, no exaggeration, what, like, Jim Jordan thinks I am. My mom worked for a newspaper called Frontline, which is, like, the front line of the proletariat will rise up again, like Karl Marx. It was all just, like, Marxists, basically. But yeah. to be fair, they, they're also, like, it's a lot of intellectuals, and, and, like, they're reading everything. They're, like, they're not, like, hippie, like, silly... <laughs> 
<laughs> like 60s. Like it's, it's all very political and da da. So my my godmother is one of these people, and she she married a native Hawaiian man named Michael. And so there was a lot of education on this trip. So like so we but we pull into this area that we're going to be staying, and they they've been squatting on the beach basically. There's no place. It's it's, it's drift. <laughs> and when I, I'm not exaggerating when I say this, it was like a shanty town basically. So it was probably ten mm-hmm. different shacks kind of, but they're made out of like driftwood and tarps that they'd found from the sea uh, in some cases. But they have <laughs> then it's, it's weirder than that though, because then they're furnished inside. There's no doors. There's just flaps with tarps. And like, it's like a uh, unhoused person's like, like a uh, squatting area or something, but it's called Anahola Beach Park. And, but they have electricity. So there's like refrigerators and stuff in there. And the people have television, they're stealing electricity from the uh, electrical poles and like running them to this thing to, to get electricity. So, but the, so there's electricity and there's like an outdoor beach because it was meant to be like a public area. So there's an outdoor like shower and stuff like that. And it's, uh, uh, the beach is beautiful. <laughs> but for me, like showing up to our Hawaiian vacation to be like, sorry, where are we staying? <laughs> We're staying in the shack? Like, <laughs> the best is the thinking, thinking it was a limo was you being insane. But now the tables yeah. have turned. <laughs> yes. And the yes. And then we're staying in this from my remembrance, me and Ace stay in the sh- the shack and then across the road because uh, like let, let's back up politically because th- this is uh, this is all true. It's like, you know, Hawaii was basically stolen <laughs> by, you know, like Lily Kalani was a queen. They had like 50 treaties with like every country in the world basically that like and then the United States came in and basically a policeman was shot and, and Lily Kalani just was like, okay, I don't want this to go to war. And then the, all of Hawaii was now American. And so, like, so I don't know, I can't remember when they became a state or whatever, but like, but there were laws made that were basically like in trying to make things right, they were supposed to give land back to native Hawaiians. So, so, so that was sort of like, you know, Michael and a lot of people were like, we're waiting for our land, but we, like none has been deeded to us or like, it takes a really long time to actually get that land. So, in the interim, this across the street from these these shacks are is this this house that they've been building, and Sandra has taken all of her her inheritance from her mom and put it into this house. Like, and they spent like thirty five thousand dollars. It was saying it was a house is a little weird. It was like a plywood house, basically. So none of it's been furnished or whatever. But they're working on it forever, um, and it does have electricity. But so my parents stay in there, and then me and my brother stay on the on the beach in this house. But like, there's there's flying cockroaches, and like, I mean, just. <laughs> There was just for me. I was like, "This is a nightmare." This is like, I, I, my <laughs> brother had a great time. Like, in fact, like I, I have audio of my brother talking about this, which I can, I can play real quick. Uh, let me see if this works. It was like camping. My dad said it was a quote scene, uh, and then I asked him to describe what he meant by that, and he said it was just like you know they. I think they partied pretty hard, um, but it was really fun for me. I mean, I was eight. I was just in it. I was. I befriended a local Hawaiian boy named Coco. I spent most of my days with him and the mornings I would wake up, we'd go out on his makeshift canoe and catch fish in the coral reef for my mom's friends so they could have for their breakfast. And we just hung out with all these local Hawaiian kids. Um, We ended up going to like a luau um, for a celebration of a baby that was born in the community. And my mom used to be a sign painter. So she painted this big sign for them. And we went to a natural water slide, which was these two massive rocks that were kind of edged together. And there was this slick moss in the middle. Okay, that's all true. <laughs> like, the, like we, we, <laughs> This is the best definition of the ages 8 and 12. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the best example. He was was loving it. Like eight still sees the wonder in the world and like, I made a local friend. Whereas you're like, where's my fucking limo? (laughs) The kids are also (laughs) younger too. So he had like more options with hanging out with people. And we did like, we had an amazing time. I mean, like, like for, I was telling my dad, like, I was like, he's like, do you remember that beach? I was like, yeah, like we found that riptide. And then me and my brother would, like duck our heads under and follow the riptide in and see how long our breath would last as you got pulled under. (laughs) 
Jeez. Oh, man. That was like super. <laughs> and then obviously the waterfall. It's, I mean, it's super like amazingly beautiful. But there's, you know, like there's a lot of like vets who were a part of this community. And like it was, it was just like this. Me, yes. I, again, I was just like, oh, what is this? Like, yeah. what are we doing? And then the thing that my brother mentioned there, the sign that was made that like my mom painted the sign. The reason that that sign was made was that four days, this is a six day trip. Four days into the trip, about, <laughs> we wake up in the morning and th- about 30 police cars are pulling in and they're federal agents. So all these federal agents get out and they start tacking up eviction notices everywhere, like on everything, every structure, every car, every, like uh, on, the, on the house that they, my, my uh, godmother had built. <laughs> And so it becomes this huge, it's like, you're going to get evicted. It's like two days after we're leaving, they're coming in and they're going to clear everybody out and evict everybody. And so again, for me, I was like, what is happening (laughs) on this vacation? (laughs) Uh, And so then my mom gets into like activist mode and she like paints this huge, they got this big piece of plywood and she paints this beautiful mural to make it look more official when they come in. And people start people, and then people start mm-hmm. coming out of the woodworks, like hippies from I don't know where, who are just activists, come like are, show up and start making documentaries. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it's like it's local news, maybe covering something like a this. I don't bit. know. Like, you I don't know. know. I, like, yeah. you know, it was the government. Like, so I don't know how much they wanted to be involved. But like, but like, but the woman named I remember this woman named Smoky Rain showed up with her boyfriend, and she was like, they were making a documentary. I was like, like, and so my mom makes this big, beautiful sign that they put in front to make it look more official before. And then they did a big luau and the, the, the radio station came. They did have like local, or were like on, okay, on yeah. every yeah. side. That is really a funny, and I do think that documentaries are incredible tools for societal change, but it is a really funny hippie thing when shit's going bad to be like, don't worry, we're going to come <laughs> make a doc. We'll be there. You're like... <laughs> We're getting evicted yeah, in two worry. days. Smokey's, Smokey's on the next uh, plane over. Smokey Rain's yeah. coming. Smokey yeah, Rain. Don't worry. <laughs> I think with editing, uh, we might have it done in like 18, 19 months. Also, what was the name of the sort of native Hawaiian guy that your godmother was married to? Michael. He, he got pretty, he got sort of cheated out of the cool name yeah. contest. No, no. In terms yeah. of. Yeah. It's like every time a kid in the Bay Area gets a Yorma, a guy in Hawaii has to get a Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, we visited them, them since this all happened, and uh, yeah, Michael was a big part of our family for a long time. He would drink a lot, though, and I remember one of the the things because we were in, <laughs> we were all staying together, was that he would sort of pass out and and he would snore, and then me and it was so regular that me and my brother would like beatbox to it, and we would go. <laughs> 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 I do picture that while Michael's snoring, the uh, the flaps on the shanty are like blowing out. <laughs> Very well. <possible. laughs> that's when the cockroaches are getting in. <laughs> yes, disturbing the chickens that were running around. And but then to complete that, like they got evicted. The ne- like like right after we left, everyone got evicted. Everything got torn down with bulldozers. Her house got torn down, and then my godmother and like six other people were in jail for nine months after that. Jeez wow. Louise. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it was, <laughs> so the documentary in the end maybe didn't help. It didn't. I don't think. Well, but you know what? I, they became known as like the Anahola Beach Park 7 or something. So oh, maybe, well, there you maybe go. it did. Maybe it did. You know? And then she ran for mayor after that, too. She ran for mayor of Kauai. Was the plywood house that they were building, was that evicted as well? Or was that more legal? That got torn down. That was the saddest because then we watched the documentary. It was like, I was only at, by the way, I was like only like a half an hour documentary. But that was, seeing that was like, just like so. Because they because they got a quick claim deed, which I don't really understand the mechanics of that. But it's like basically like you if you go down and you say like, wait, we're on this thing and we've been here for a while and da, da, da. And again, like, he was on the list as a, a native Hawaiian man to to be able to get this land. So he sh- he should have been able to get it. It just it takes years to do, and and apparently you can't like just yeah. claim whatever land you want. Yeah. And then eventually they were they were actually given like a bunch of acres, and we went <laughs> me and oh, me good. and my wife the first trip we went to we <laughs> visited them, and it was great. Did well, you really? Well, when yeah. you guys before you were married? 
Uh, yeah, it was like right when the Lonely Island started, like like right after we got graduated, I was already dating Mari and uh, Andy and Keith came down to LA and I had already had this trip planned. So they were looking out, like going to live for houses in LA. Yeah. And I went to Hawaii and visited uh, Sandra and Michael again. And did oh, you uh, did you make multiple trips over your life or or I was visited it just them those two? Three three times, I think. Yeah. I think it was three. That's great. Three times, yeah. But the the first one was the most memorable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I like a couple of things from Aces that I want to go back to. The um natural waterfall. Did you have a memory of that? Yeah, that was, it was it's amazing. Especially like because you are with local people who are like, oh no, no, go to this one sort of thing. And and it did take like forever to like hike into the, the uh, you know. I mean, and Kauai is stunningly beautiful. I mean, it's like it is yeah. Jurassic Park. Yeah. Yeah. We used to go to, there was like a natural water slide thing in New Hampshire called Diana's Baths yes. that we would go to. And it was freezing, but it was also these like very smooth rocks. It wasn't so mossy. It was just smooth rocks. Yeah. yeah. And so fun as a kid. And I remember going back maybe as a teenager or like mid 20s. And then there were all these signs that say like, don't swim here. This is like drinking water or whatever. But I don't know if we were not allowed to be there when we were there sort of taking those rides, but you're definitely not allowed to now or not supposed to at least. It's so Um, cool. Like Hawaii has so many, I actually went on vacation with me, Mari, Akiva and Liz went to Hawaii and found another, I can't remember what island we were on, but we, we found another one of those deep woods like you know you had to like a mile in and then you, you hike forever da, 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 and then there's this huge open area of this like this like almost like this lake and then you have to go like through the lake and then up a rope ladder up this waterfall and like and then the, like in the back there's this amazing it was great and it was really great to watch akiva do that too that was uh, one of the funniest things i've ever seen this is um <laughs> real this is a tangent but you'll see where it got inspired from <laughs> We're talking about swimming and drinking water. Was it during the pandemic that you started making weird nursery, like uh, fables? Oh, the, your... like Derek stories? <laughs> yeah, Derek stories. <laughs> it was during the pandemic, yes. Yeah, yeah. it was. So Yorm reached out to me <laughs> and said he was, yeah, you sent me a Derek story. You're like, hey, we um, listened to it's this. Probably, I, you know, anybody with kids, I was like, do your kids think this is funny? <laughs> but Derek was sort of like an Aesop-y type dude. Right. It was their Aesop's fables. These are on Spotify. It's on all streaming <laughs> podcasts. They're like two minute long stories. They're basically Aesop's fables that get interrupted by a guy named Derek <laughs> and then changes the moral. <laughs> and they're called Derek stories. The, yeah. The, so the downriver one was. <laughs> Was it someone? Yeah, you really listened to the. What was the downriver one? Just did you, I mean, there. It's only two minutes long. Go listen to Derek's story. But just in your best, Yorm. Give us just for Josh, real quick. How did Derek ruin this? So the Aesop's fable is that there's a lamb that's bathing in a river, and then uh, up from there, there's a wolf trying to come up with an excuse to eat the lamb to like basically be like, "Hey, how dare you drink from the water that I'm uh, bathing in?" Da, da, da. He's like, "Oh no, if the, the water is is uh, soiled, it cannot be from me because it runs down from you to me." Da, da. And it's a, basically like he's going to eat him anyway, sort of thing. He's not going to get like. A, a villain is always going to be a villain. It was their it was their moral. But in in this version, as he's trying to like poke at the lamb, then Derek's like, "Oh no, that's me actually. I'm up here just ringing out the old dungarees here." And he's like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, I must have had a bad jalapeno or something just ripped in the inside of my pants." He's very Carmen. <laughs> Because it's just, uh, the insides of my pants are just coated pockets to pockets. <laughs> well, there you go. One of the things, Yorm and, and Andy Samberg, who were two-thirds of the Lonely Island, I think one of the things you probably uh, c- connected on early in life was a love of diarrhea as a punchline to a joke. <laughs> it's it's still a punchline, constantly. There's yeah. a, there's something that we're working on right now that involves diarrhea. Oh, I've, I've heard it. Yeah. I've heard it. Have you played it for your kids? Because it is popular. <laughs> my, my 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 Wiley's friends cannot get enough. I literally had a conversation where he was like, "I don't know why I can't hear this again." I'm like, "It's not out yet." That's great. Yeah. Uh, you wow. can't go find it. You uh, you've got your two kids. Do they travel well? Yes, and then it goes. I don't know if this is like this for you, you guys, but like, but uh, it goes. It comes back and forth. Like like uh, he was great for like. I mean the. Wiley was on a plane at like eight weeks to Berlin. <laughs> so we were like, ah, he's settled. 
And then, uh, you know, and then just recently, like we went to London recently and it was like, you know, oh man, he was, <laughs> he was, uh, he was super anxious about the whole thing. I don't oh, know what, interesting. what it was, but like, yeah. How was the, how was he with the jet lag and like settling down when he got there? It was, I mean, it was okay. Like we were trying to keep them on a New York schedule and, yeah. and, because it was five days, but then every day it's like very consistently, it's like one hour has chipped away. And then by the end, I was like, no, this is, this is, we're fucked. Yeah. How long of a trip total? To, to London? Yeah. Was that like you were going to be there for a while or that was Oh, like yeah. A, I mean, it was just the, just the right amount to like be problematic on the back end. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We like to do it like that. <laughs> as long as it's very problematic. Because <laughs> And they've had to move around. Uh, your wife, Mari, who I've been lucky to know for a very long time, is much like you, an accomplished film director. So you guys have moved around your kids not as like on trips but uh hey we live in pittsburgh now because yeah she's directing a movie about mr rogers so does wiley do you feel like as a kid he thinks of that as a trip i don't know we we had to live in uh in berlin as well for a little while because mario was doing the queen's gambit uh, out there so like so we were there for uh, the same amount of time it was basically like four and a half months so it's always been that it's crossed over into his school year so it's a little bit beyond a trip because then you're also going to school there. So he's gone to school in Pittsburgh and Berlin and L.A. recently. And yeah, so it's like so he's had to, it, it, it's like the summer plus two months or something like that. So we, I don't know what he thinks of it as like, <laughs> it's actually another like, like now I'm creating my own family trips and, and the... <laughs> I think maybe the best trip that, because I make a lot of dad decisions of like, this will be fine. And when it was just Wiley, because there's a pretty big gap, he's nine, uh, our, our daughter's three. But when we were in Berlin, I I decided to take him. Mari had to go to London for a second. This sounds very hoity doy. <laughs> we're like jet setting. We're, but she has to be in London for the weekend. And I was like, I'm going to go to this place that these stuntman guys, when I was working on Kung Fury, the movie, I met, I met all these German stunt people who were like, you got to go to this place called Tropical Islands. And you should look this up. But there's a place called Tropical Islands. It's about 45 minutes outside of Berlin. And it's in the most massive old, like, Soviet era. It's going east. Soviet era Zeppelin factory. So it's the biggest, like, Twinkie, like, concrete-looking Twinkie you've ever seen. And you're, like, like, just so unbelievably massive. And they created a water park in it. So, wow. so I was like, I'll bring my then like four-year-old to Tropical uh, alone. Like I'll just bring him there. So I drive to Tropical Islands and then, you know, it's a theme. It's a, what it was, it's amazing. Like there's like a jungle inside and you can take a hot air balloon <laughs> ride inside the thing. And, <laughs> and we go there and then I just proceed to feed him nothing but like fries and candy for like, Six hours. I was just like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> it's vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. And then, and yeah. then getting home. I mean, just like, and then, and then wondering why he's like melting down, just yeah. like screaming at me. And like, yeah, that yeah, was like good. Well, we saw you, we were in Pittsburgh and yeah. cross paths and I want to say grab lunch or something like that. But you've had a couple occasions to sort of be a dad in a new place where, I mean, I know that you're always working as well, but when Mari's shooting something, yeah. you might end up as like, now I'm a dad in Berlin with a kid, or now I'm a dad in Pittsburgh. And you've had to sort of adapt to those different cities. And you seem to really be enjoying it when you were in Pittsburgh in terms of like, oh, it's a whole new world of stuff. We're, that- we're a good we're a good couple for that sort of thing. Like when Mari's like, because Mari, I think when, when deciding to do the Queen's Gambit, she was also like, who's going to watch this show about chess? <laughs> <laughs> like really, like come on. I was like, well, yeah, but you should do. You should do it. Like we, like yeah. So yeah, like I'm, I'm definitely a good partner for that sort of thing. I'm just like, this will be fine. Like whether it's like pie yeah. TV or like just like being overly optimistic. But that's kind of what I mean by like dad decisions. I think that like those are like, you know, like I was just talking to Avi the uh, the other day, like, and he was like, should I go to that? like after we were, were going to uh, this is Kristen's Kristen Wiig's husband, like, uh, but but Avi, Avi was like was like in addition to going to this like ninja trampoline park that we were at. He was like, I think maybe I'll go to the Natural History Museum. I was like, yeah, yeah, man, push it. (laughs) (laughs) Get him some candy. God love him. When you touch down in in a Berlin or a Pittsburgh, do you just start sort of, you know, Googling or reaching out to figure like what are good 
things to do with a kid here? Like, what are my... I like to like sort of either drive around or run around like, like, and just sort of figure out things based on that so much. I like, the, and then there's, there were, there were things that I would immediately do in places where like somehow I always end up like as, at a, like a skate, skate shop <laughs> kind of thing. Like, <laughs> so in Berlin, well, Berlin. I like it. It's like somehow, I guess maybe it's because I Google where's best skate shop. <laughs> it might, be it might, be it might have been that. But like, no, I, I bought a, a skateboard there and I would skate at this like this this park near uh, where his school was. But that was also when we were writing the MacGruber series. So it was particularly weird because I would, I met these, <laughs> it's just meeting random people. And I was like, I, like, I just have no shame and like, what's up, man? So there was a, a production company that was right near where, like three doors down from where we were staying in Prince Lauerberg. And I met these guys and I was like, oh, there's like a film production company. And I was like, hey, when are you guys done? Um, because I'm writing with people in Los Angeles and they come in at like 10 in the morning. So if you're done at like 6.30, I, if I could get in here at seven, I could just write all night while you're not here. And so that's what mm -hmm. every night I would write from like 7 p.m. to like sometimes five in the morning. Then I would drive. Then I would go back to bed as long as I could. Then I would drive Wiley to school. Then I would go to the skate park to try to make myself tired. <laughs> then I would go back to bed. <laughs> then I, would start all over again. Like, <laughs> I like the uh, Germans. Germans think an American skater. Their stereotype now is they just do it to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're my age, and I, by the way, I don't skate much anymore because yeah. I have this. I don't know. You can't see this scar, but like the last time I really tried was a. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say that the kind of dad you are who's like, let's just go to the place the German stuntmen recommended. <laughs> it does like, because another thing in Ace is that really made me laugh was when he asked your dad where you were going in Hawaii, your dad was like, it's like kind of a scene. <laughs> That's such a funny They party, funny they thing. party pretty hard. They party pretty hard. That's such a funny thing for a dad to tell an eight-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the other crazy thing in researching this with my parents was that both of them, their response when I was like, yeah, I was disappointed. They were bo their, both of their responses was like, wow. <laughs> like they just, they, they had no idea. I will say, I'm going to guess based on your parents and based on, on their philosophy about the world, they also would probably be like, yeah, sorry, Yorm, our friends got evicted. I'm sorry you had a bad... My, that was my mom. That was, <laughs> it wasn't so much of that. It was my mom was like, you know what? You learned something. And yeah, you know, yeah. she was, she was not wrong. <laughs> I just don't know if I would like, you know, call it a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I would say you did a grandparents move when you were calling it a dad move, but like bringing a kid to a water park and just feeding him sugar for like six hours. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Like, cause it, uh, you know, <laughs> because I feel like grandparents sort of feel like they have this like diplomatic immunity of like, hey man, what they do in my six hours. <laughs> that, like, <laughs> yes, I'm I above just, the law. It just, it's always different when you don't, when there's no one to hand off that child to. <laughs> what uh, my, uh, I remember the first time, I think the first time our oldest had ice cream was with my father-in-law, who's the best dude in the world. But he came home and Alexis was like, did you give him ice cream? And he went, he liked it. <laughs> and I said, we didn't think he wouldn't like it. Like, we weren't whole, I was just laughing. First of all, I was very pro the idea of like, that's exactly how we should get ice cream for the first time is on the sly with his grandpa. Yeah. Like, yeah. so I got no problem. But it was so, I was like, your defense stinks. <laughs> I just like it when when parents now when it shifts a little bit where they're kind of in the kid position of like oh but no but I didn't mean you know like uh, like we did that with my mom a lot too like to, like pandemic because we were out there uh, in the bay for the birth of my daughter and it was the same granted it was pandemic time so we had some rules that we were supposed to follow and then occasionally my mom would just be like. It was like, you couldn't go in a store. And then we'd come back and, yeah, she'd brought him to go get ice cream. And you were like, it's a store. It's still a store. And you're like, well, you know yeah. what? No, okay, but... And you're like, well, look, the dynamic has shifted here. You also wonder how much the kid is sort of pushing that, being like, grandma, please, grandma, please. And then it's like, well, I'm not going to... You're pretty... This is, I can make his dreams come true in these moments. Yeah. 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 Were your parents into... Were they big on... Were they okay with sweets? Yeah. They were. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think we had probably no exaggeration. I would say we ate ten times more sweets than my kids. Oh, really? easily. Oh, well, yeah, maybe higher. Your kids eat sweets that aren't sweets. Like they get tricked. I have a joke 
in my stand-up, which is their cookie is what we used to have to eat to get a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how healthy their cookies are. Yeah. See, that's- it was like, if you finish this weird, like, smash dates <laughs> shaped into a circle. <laughs> see, that's, that was my upbringing. Like, because we had, like, carob. Yeah. And like, oh, yeah, that's, I remember Sandberg said the same thing, but you Berkeley kids were like, wait. No, no, there was a moment where me and my friend snuck a bottle of vitamin C. We ate an entire bottle of vitamin C. <laughs> and I calculated it and I was like, oh, we ate 50,000 times our daily allowance. <laughs> <laughs> and just peed like electric. <laughs> yeah. Neon, yeah. Um, yeah, like I'll go to Seth's house and like uh, my nephew Ash will be like, oh, do you want an ice cream, Uncle Pashi? And I'll be like, sure. And he'll go to the fridge and Alexi will be like, it's not ice cream. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's something else. It's That's like, weird. Yeah. Like, do you want these? Do you want a cookie? And she's like, it's not a cookie. <laughs> but yeah. I'll be sure. Uh, it's like it, they all have the, um, the, the texture of an old uh, coin. <laughs> like that's how hard it is to fight through one of the cookies. Yeah, I, the, you're looking in the right places then. That's really hippy dippy shit. Because it's like, it, I felt like all that oh, got yeah. better. Like back in the 70s, it was, <laughs> which I can say. Oh, I will say that's like, I mean, like, well, Josh is, you know, Josh is a vegan. And, and even in just like the last few years, like hasn't, like the the food tastes so much better. Your options taste better. Yeah, 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 yeah. way better, way better. Yeah. So. Also, last time I was with Seth and his family, the kids got these little like parfait desserts. And it was like this fake chocolate thing with some fruit and whipped cream. And they were like, where's this whipped cream from? And Alexi had to be like, I made it. And they were like, oh. And she's like, yeah, I made the mistake of one time giving them like ready whip. And now if I like make yeah, them like, whoa, like, there's a whole world of homemade whipped cream. They're like, this is garbage. <laughs> first um, time. The, but then it's, by the way, the, the first time Ash had a real hot chocolate because there were no other options. We'd taken, we were in New Mexico where Alexa lives. We'd taken this gondola up. Oh, you've, you know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. shot McGruber there, you know, but like that crazy gondola yeah. that goes to the top of this. And again, you get up there and it's like this little chalet and it's, he, Ash is with his cousin. And so they shared a, literally shared a hot chocolate that was a real one. And then he threw up and we had to like give him an hour long bath. We had to cancel dinner reservations because yeah. it's like, wow, we can't. Yeah, the real stuff. He had half, half a half chocolate. We're not sure he's going to make it. Yeah. 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 He's going to be a real joy when he goes off to college. Yeah. Oh He's going to be like, oh, Ash has to go lay on the bathroom floor again. He's back he's- with the nurse. <laughs> <laughs> we made, yeah, that's it. Like Ash's frat house, like we had to hold his hair back while he puked up a M&M's. <laughs> <laughs> Yorm, uh, uh, a lovely trip I took, uh, and again, a lot of times I speak and I'm almost like try to legally defend myself against Josh calling it out as not a family trip. But when your family began, I went on a trip to your wedding and it was fantastic. It was in Big Sur. Yeah. Mm. Correct? Uh, Car- Car- Carmel, Cl- very close. Yeah. Carmel, close. But it was a really lovely, and also like everything, there was a real nice wavy gravy vibe to the whole Oh, was there? Deal. Oh, no, from your perspective, yeah. that's yeah. It's nice to hear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there were, I feel like there were a lot of like, there were like people where like yoga was a profession. Oh, well, yeah. That set the- You know what I mean? Tone. Like there was, it was like comedy slash- No, that, okay. Yoga. That really set the tone because the, the woman who married us was a, a, is a yoga instructor, is our friend- who we want to yes. go retreat with. So that really set that tone. And then later it was on K. And, and <laughs> I think it was the first time I was somewhere, and God, correct me if I'm wrong, she maybe started by making us thank the people who the land. You, does that sound right? Like a the, land acknowledgement? Yes. And yeah, I, there was, I think it was, was the first time I heard a land acknowledgement out loud. Yeah, yeah, I think that that is right. I, and I, it's also like, that's always a fun one because it, you, you ask your friend to do it and then you're like, oh, that's what you're going to say. Like, it's a, you know, it's like, just as a big surprise to me as it was to you. Uh, yeah, I was, but it was great. And the other thing, this is, um, now I'm, I go, you know, treading on dangerous ground because it's a little bit of an SNL story. So I'll make it quick, Josh. But I will say, I think the Peyton Manning show where Forte did that dancing scene where he was a basketball coach had happened the previous yeah, year because yeah. it was a summer wedding. And then this woman, like an older woman said to Will, like that, I love that so much. And then Will just did the full dance. <laughs> he just like, it was that thing where when you compliment Forte, you end. Like, I felt like halfway through it, I was worried the woman was gonna be like, uh-huh, no, no, I remember it. <sighs> it was during the wedding he did this. No, 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 it was like at the hotel. Oh, okay, gotcha, 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 yeah. 
But it was one of those really fun, I mean, those weddings, and there were a few of them. Mine was right at the tail end of it. But like, it was those that like, that was that it felt like an SNL wedding. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it really was. And Josh, I'm sorry I didn't invite you. We weren't, you know. That's okay. I, if it's more SNL stuff, I'm <laughs> glad like, I'm I done. <laughs> I get yeah. it. Uh-huh. Yeah. This was awesome. Do you have, was that all we had from Asa? Because the one thing I want to say is how much I enjoy Asa's voice. I love, I love my brother's voice. He's, he's fantastic. In fact, he, he, we just did a thing for this Knuckles uh, Sonic the Hedgehog spinoff show that he did all the music for, and he plays the voice of this demon. So when you see episode four, that's my Great. brother. Uh, he did do one more that was about, it was about a fight that I had. With my dad that I don't remember that was on the trip. Oh, let's hear it. Okay, all right. My mom said that my brother and my dad got into it and that it got physical. (laughs) I guess Yorm like punched my dad or something. Um, So my I told this to my dad. He was like, I have no recollection of that. But he said that (laughs) uh, like some months prior. Yorm had graduated eighth grade, and after the graduation ceremony, he disappeared with his friend Winston for like five hours and my parents were like losing their shit, freaking out. And when he came home, he was just like, I'm not going on the Hawaii trip. Nobody (laughs) understands me. Only Winston understands me. That was the quote that my dad remembered. And he said like, oh shit, like this is how it's about to be when we're out in Hawaii. Like it's just going to be an uphill battle (laughs) for Yorm. Not for me. I was chilling. So aren't you glad I played that? (laughs) I'm so yeah. glad. Do you now, uh, is Winston, do you, have, do, you uh, do you remember Winston? Yeah, well, okay. Winston, my friend Winston Ross and, uh, and a guy named Mark Shotland, I was really, I was very good pals with right before I met Akiva. I met Akiva when I was 12 years old. So yeah, so I met those guys and we were in, it was the first comedy rap that I was ever involved in. We were in a group called Strike Three because we had each struck out with ladies. <laughs> You'd be cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so we would write raps about, I guess it wasn't comedy. It was comedy rap from an outside perspective. Right. For us, it was just emotional rap. You know right, I mean? right. Yeah. You didn't think Strike Three was funny. You were like, no, we're, sh- we're no. showing you our full hearts. But me and but me and Winston did some pretty good, uh, we had some pretty good pranks though. We did a, we did a lot of um, prank calling because you could do that back in the day. Yeah. Um, so our big, the, the one I was the most proud of, because I was like, this is a really weird joke for two, two 12-year-olds to come up with. We would call in our little voices, we would call people's houses and we would find an answering machine and then we would read, we'd fill up their answering machine by reading John Steinbeck's The Red Pony. <laughs> we'd just keep calling back and, and be like, where was I? <laughs> Chapter two. <laughs> I was like, that's a fucking weird joke. For yeah. Like, just think about our little world voices being like, eh, Captain. <laughs> and that's how Audible started. That's how Audible started. <laughs> Bay Area. Yeah. That's when Bay Area became a tech yeah. hub. Somebody was like, this is amazing. I'm listening to the Red you know, I, I did listen to it to go to bed. The best one that I get Higgins does to me, Steve Higgins, SNL producer, Yarm and I know. First time McConaughey hosted, he told a story in his monologue, and Higgins said, you should practice it and record it, like, and so McConaughey recorded this long story about his dad, and then, like, every three years, I'll get a voicemail, and it's just, like, hey, uh, and then I remember my dad's, and I'm like, what is this? And I'm like, oh, fucking Higgins. Just literally finds it, and then plays it in, it just, Those like, Those are I think, the best jokes to me. Those are the best jokes. I, with the advent of AI, this is in the same vein. I'm just, like, rem- I wanted to find old emails that I hadn't responded to and then have AI write a book as a response. Like be like, write 300 pages on how sorry I am. That I didn't get it. And then send that years later, like, dear Seth, I'm so sorry. I missed <laughs> just like, rah, why did I miss it in the first place? <laughs> yeah. God. I looked around my place for the sweatshirt you said you left over here. I just can't seem to find it anywhere. Yeah, I like that. Do you, looking back, do you think it's true that Winston was the only one who understood you? Maybe. It's it's possible. I mean, it's, you know. It must be a funny thing when people become teens, when kids become teens, that you actually then start commiserating with the younger kid about like, hey, look out for this one. Oh. Like all of a sudden an eight-year-old is more rational. Because it does feel like, I know we're hearing 
Ace's perspective as an adult. <laughs> really? No. From those two short messages. This was always the dynamic, though, Seth. <laughs> Asa was always cooler than me. Like, Asa, okay, just to give some context. First of all, my brother's in a band called Electric Guest. He's, he's a very talented music producer. He's an incredible he's, So he's a cool lead singer of a band. Always been cool as shit. When the first always time I met Asa, I, because I will say, all jokes aside, I thought you were cool. Yeah, like when I'm you fine. showed up at yeah, SNL, I'm, I'm totally yeah. fine. I didn't. I do not think you're a nerd anyway. When your brother showed up, I thought you were the biggest fucking nerd in the world. I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh shit, Asa's Asa's next like to me. Asa. Yeah, Asa's like me from Concentrate. Like everything's like sharper, smaller, like more compact. <laughs> yeah, he's cooler. Like he he had a competition with himself where he was trying to see how many like winter balls and like proms he could go to in the Bay Area. And I think he went to thirteen or something. Like <laughs> wow. I met I met a girl. Two girls introduced themselves to me on the same day to me, his brother, as their girlfriend. He's like, well, Ace is, Ace is my boyfriend. I was like, oh, really? I just, because I just met somebody. And you were like, I'm in strike three. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so to, to get back to that, so I used to record myself on an audio cassette. And when, when I was rejected, it was a real, this was real painful uh, when I was, when I got my strike, I, recorded a lot of myself maybe like and you know and she just she didn't like me i guess you know like it was like a lot of that like 10 minutes of that and then years later my brother found this tape and he was like he was like dude i found this tape of this girl like crying about something i was like that's not a girl that's me I was like, yeah, this is perfect. I mean, I was I was hopeful that he had remixed it, that he had used his multitude of <laughs> oh, music skills if, to make. If we only had that to go out on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and here it is. <laughs> uh, what a delight! Thank you to both yeah. you and Asa for the work he put into this. And uh, but before you go, uh, Posh has some questions. Yes. All right. Here we go, Yarm. You can only pick one of these. Is your ideal vacation relaxing, adventurous, or educational? <laughs> I think it's adventurous. All right. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite means of transportation? Train, plane, automobile, boat, bike, uh, your own two feet? I do. I'm Something a, else? I'm a real Joe Biden. <laughs> I, I, do, I, do like, I do like train. All right. I feel like train. A lot yeah. of people train. Yeah. Well, that's the romantic answer. Like, if I'm probably being honest, it's like, oh, it's a fast plane. It's a romantic answer. But I think if we had... It's also a good reminder if we had better trains in this country, I think a lot of people are yeah. right there. Ready. On the lot, ready to take them. Yeah. Yes. yeah. If you could take a vacation with any family, alive or dead, fictional or real, other than your own family, what family would you like to take a vacation with? Oh, alive or dead? Like, so are people mostly choosing like historical figures? <laughs> Um, so, I mean, some, some are like, you know, friends or other, uh, you know, celebrity families or. Yeah, it'd, pro- it'd um, probably be like, it's hard not to, like Macho Man's fam- family, you know. Randy Macho Man Savage. Ma- like Macho Man Randy Savage's family. And I would hope it would be like somewhere in Florida. Yeah. By the way, just a little shout out. Macho Man released a rap album and it's called Be A Man Hulk. It's a diss album to Hulk Hogan. If you have not heard it, it's one of the best things you've ever heard. It's really well produced. And he says, because he doesn't want to like alienate fans, he says, kick you in the butt a lot. He's like, I'll kick you in the butt. Like, it's, it's fucking great. And you can tell he's like a I'm real glad. Rap. I'm glad you said if you haven't heard it for all the <laughs> listeners who were like, I heard that, dude. Oh, okay. okay. I don't know how, how nerdy <laughs> comedy fans your audience is. I assume I, I think that's yeah. a wrestling and rap fans. I don't even know if that's It's comedy, comedy actually. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's full right. on comedy. <laughs> If you had to be stranded on a desert island with one member of your family, who would it be? Asa. Coolest guy ever. <laughs> great. Asa, great. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that'd be my pick. <laughs> and uh, Berkeley, your hometown is Berkeley? Indeed. Uh, would you recommend Berkeley as a vacation destination? No. Probably, probably <laughs> not. As kids, we were like, we thought it was like an urban hub. And I was like, this is like the coolest. Berkeley's like hardcore. And then as soon as I moved away, I was like, oh, I lived in a, like a quaint college town with cafes. Yeah. yeah. Well, that sounds, it could be lovely. Uh, I've actually never been to Berkeley. I would, I'd like to, I'd like to see Berkeley. It's very I nice. went and yeah. did a show there once and uh, one of you guys told me, sent me to a very good burrito place. Gordo burritos. I'll, I'll pronounce it correctly, even though everyone says it with an S. Sort of thing. But Gordo, Gordo burritos. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a, And in fact, there was a moment at SNL. It was a, uh, Andy was like having an animated discussion with Billy Joe, Joe from uh, Green Day, 
And I walked up and I was like, you guys talking about Gordo? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and then Seth has our final questions. Have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? No. Would you want to go? Yeah. Are you, are you inviting? No. Okay. We just, Josh and I, it, Josh has barely been and I haven't been and Josh really wants to do it and I really don't. Why don't you want to? That's. I mean, I probably will. Isn't it like one of the seven wonders of the world or something? It's like, there's no way of knowing. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, we're not going to look into that. But uh, I just, I just feel like, uh, I think it's a seven. I, yeah, I do. It's the wonder why people go there. <laughs> Was Ooh, that fast enough? Yeah, Sick burn. Was that a fast enough burn? And then I don't know if I was it. Was Can we yeah. take the air out so it's like right after? <laughs> <laughs> and your, this is very exciting, and hopefully Josh won't be deeply jealous. Myself, Andy Sandberg, and Akiva Schaffer have a new podcast that just came out about the Lonely Island, about all the famous Lonely Island songs and as well as the ones that are unfamous and the ones that are infamous. I hope Josh is jealous about this because I'm really excited about it and I want to cut into your family time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not jealous. I'm very excited. I mean, there are songs that you guys have that will stick in my head. <laughs> I jog very often to your music to like complete albums of yours. I think it's great. Yeah, I've always I've always been a fan, and uh, that's shocking. To yeah, me. I'm looking for which them. to tell me just to prove it. What song have you jogged to? <laughs> that whole album that the um, uh, the Michael Bolton track is is on so badly. You'd be like Poodle Hat. <laughs> no, it's a uh, Turtleneck and Chain. Yeah, I want to yeah, say yeah. is it that? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's a good. Um, all right, you, you proved I love it. it. You proved it. And then very often, if I'm like about to leave the house. And I can't find my wallet and my keys. Or like, once I have everything, I'll go, okay, I'm reloaded. And then I leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's amazing yeah. to me that, like, he really did just love doing that impression. I think that's how it came about. I've been like, well, I can do Scarface. surprising It's made its way into my, uh, my and, every day. And then there was a song that we did called Trouble on Dookie Island. And, and we wanted to have a Scarface on it because it was like a crime story, like Wu-Tang style crime story. And we were like, wait, how much is that? Every time you use the sample, it's $10,000. And we were like, we know a guy. We called up Michael. <laughs> was like, you need to do the sample for us. <laughs> There's Scarface guy. Yeah, that's really funny. And also, Josh is going to enjoy it because I think Josh will have less of an issue with SNL stories being on a podcast that is specifically about SNL stories. Yeah, maybe you'll get it out of your system and you'll stop. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe Seth will get it out of me. I'm saying stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He is the problem. You're fine. Yeah, Yeah, it almost never comes up because of Josh. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The real bummer will be if when Josh listens to the Lonely Island podcast, if all the stories are about family trips. (laughs) (laughs) Why are they up here? What if it's really sweet, though? It's all just like, you know. So I'm talking about how much he loves his brother. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Could be. You should tune in, Josh. (laughs) And yeah, it well, helps up. I'm just like a uh, lot of me. Just tell them, be like, enough about your songs. You know what really tell rules? Tell me more my stories brother. about voicemails that Steve Higgins left for you. <laughs> I think that people are going to like the. <laughs> yeah, by the way, Josh knows Steve Higgins. That's not like someone, someone only you and I know. <laughs> I know, but sometimes for the listener. Um. All right. Well, Yorm, yeah. love you very much. Love you too. Yeah, I hope to see you soon. Hey, Lisa. Yes. And if you want to go to the Grand Canyon, Josh. I'm all in. Great. Okay. Excellent. Ace, uh, Ace and I are going to do some cool shit instead. Ah, oh, what? <laughs> all right, pal. Thank you. He wanted some now and later. Was just living his life. Neighbor said, I'ma kill you with his own kitchen knife. Wasn't great with the ladies, so he started strike three. Yelled at his dad only, Winston understands me. Twelve-year-old Yorba Tacone took a Hawaiian vacation. He was so disappointed when he saw where he'd stay. It was his drug 
But you made of driftwood With a tarp for a door There were flying cockroaches And you slept on the floor Yo! Yeah.